Third time shooting the video, kill me now. This is the Samson Q9U. It's the big brother to the Samson Q2U with the same capabilities as that mic, enabling the user to have two outs from it, both USB and XLR. But as it says in the name of the mic, this is what Samson considers a broadcast mic, which means if they want to claim to that name, well, it had better sit with the big boys. So let's find out if it can. There is a decent heft to this mic and it has a usual broadcasty look to it. It borrows a few pointers from the SM7B and perhaps some from the RA20, but we're not gonna hold that against it. Everything is metal. The grill feels good, just a touch of give to it. There is a mute button on the barrel, which by the way, does work in both XLR and USB mode. That was half a video lost. And on the back side, you can see the rest of the features. Of course, you have the USB and XLR ports, as well as your headphone jack, a mid boost, and roll off switches. All in all, it's a decent piece of gear from a build perspective. No real issues here. This is a cardioid dynamic microphone. It's 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and the sensitivity is neg 57 dBV per pascal on the XLR side, and neg 16 dBFS per pascal on the USB. And speaking of that USB, it's 24 bit and 96 kilohertz. This is the off axis rejection test of the Samson Q9U. This is me speaking about mm, four inches from the front of the capsule. Now I'm speaking about four inches off the side of the capsule. And now I'm speaking about four inches off the rear of the capsule. Now for the plosive test of the Samson Q9U. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now for the proximity effect test of the Samson Q9U. This is me speaking about four inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm about one inch off the front of the capsule. Four inches, one inch. So now we have the Samson Q9U on USB, and this is what it sounds like. Let's take a look at some of those roll-off switches while we have it in USB mode. So this is me without the roll-off switch engaged and knocking over microphones. Now this is the Q9U with the roll-off switch engaged. This is the, I don't actually know what the, I'll put up the actual specs of the roll off up here if it's available online. Now I believe the mid switch, it doesn't actually give you a little graphic about what it's doing, whether or not it's boosting or it's, it's giving a dip, but I think it's a boost in the mids and this is what it sounds like on the Q9U compared to this without the mid boost. What do you think? Now we have both the roll off and the mid boost happening at the same time. And this is what the Q9U sounds like. If this is your pony, what do you think of it? Do you like the sound of it with the boost and the roll off or just one or the other? Hit me up down below. Now we have the Q9U versus its little brother, the Q2U. This one is more expensive than this one. This one is a good value for what you get. This one is, well, I'll leave that up to you in the final comments. Which one do you like if I go between the Q9U and the Q2U? Now we have the Q9U versus the SE Dynacaster. And this is what it sounds like as I go back and forth between the two microphones. Which one do you like? This one is, uh, by definition, a broadcast microphone. I think I could probably drop it under that. It's got a few extra bells and whistles, but it also has all those nice little switches on the back. Which one do you like better? This is the Q9U. This is the SE Dynacaster. There's a massive difference between these two microphones, isn't there? Can you still see my face throughout all this gear? Now we have the Q9U up against its first really unfair opponent. Sure, the SE Dynacaster was unfair. This one, yeah, this is a tried and proven broadcast microphone, the Electrovoice RE20. And as I go between them, which one, well, I'm gonna actually ask the question, which one do you like more? Hmm? So this is, the Q9U, this is the RE20. Okay, moving on to the SM7B, which is just ridiculous. Okay, so I usually consider the RE20 to be more unfair than the SM7B, but I do know this is a lot of people's favorite microphone, and this is like the ultimate test. Q9U versus the SM7B. <laughs> Which one do you like? I, I, I think this has become a farce. I think it became a farce back at the Dynacaster. I just think this is completely unfair. What do you think? Is it super unfair? I don't really know where to start with this microphone. First of all, the mic does have value at only 150 bucks. It's an okay mic for someone that really needs or wants the dual outs. At 100 bucks less than the MV7, that does make this a decent buy for that reason. But you may have noticed that the price on this thing has dropped dramatically since it was released. And well, that's because of everything else. 
not a massive fan of the sound on this mic on either XLR or USB. In fact, in order to extract a decent sound out of this microphone, you need to use a generic low pass in the mid boost, and even then it's meh. Which makes me wonder, why do those switches exist in the first place? Shouldn't the bass sound on this mic sound at least somewhat decent? There's super loose lows, muddy mids, and just a muffled all around sound until you throw those switches on the back. And even then, sure, it sounds better than the Q2U, but it falls well short on the rest of the field. And of course, those are much more expensive microphones. But that title of broadcast, it actually carries weight. You can't just slap that name on the side of a mic that looks like a broadcast microphone. But with all that being said, yes, there is some redeeming value here especially lately when we have these inline effects and options becoming available in the consumer mainstream. If this is your pony and you need to clean up the sound a bit, it's pretty easy with something like one of the Rodecasters or perhaps the Mixcast 4 or Revelator. But without that, it, it is a pretty easy fix and post, but considering the big sales pitch with this thing is having dual outs on it, it kind of falls short outside of that. By the way, if you're curious what the next step up looks like, check out my video on the MV7.